story five of the bet and other stories by anton chekhov this librivox recording is in the public domain story five after the theatre nadja zelenina had just returned with her mother from the theatre where they had been to see a performance of eugene onegin entering her room she quickly threw off her dress loosened her hair and sat down hurriedly in her petticoat and a white blouse to write a letter in the style of tatiana i love you she wrote but you don't love me no you don't the moment she had written this she smiled she was only sixteen years old and so far she had not been in love she knew that gorny the officer and gronsdiev the student loved her but now after the theatre she wanted to doubt their love to be unloved and unhappy how interesting there is something beautiful affecting romantic in the fact that one loves deeply while the other is indifferent onegin is interesting because he does not love at all and tatiana is delightful because she is very much in love but if they loved each other equally and were happy they would seem boring instead don't go on protesting that you love me nadja wrote on thinking of gorny the officer i can't believe you you're very clever educated serious you have a great talent and perhaps a splendid future waiting but i am an uninteresting poor-spirited girl and you yourself know quite well that i shall only be a drag upon your life it's true i carried you off your feet and you thought you had met your ideal in me but that was a mistake already you are asking yourself in despair why did i meet this girl only your kindness prevents you from confessing it nadja pitied herself she wept and went on if it were not so difficult for me to leave mother and brother i would put on a nun's gown and go where my eyes direct me you would then be free to love another if i were to die through her tears she could not make out what she had written brief rainbows trembled on the table on the floor and the ceiling as though nadja were looking through a prism impossible to write she sank back in her chair and began to think of gorney oh how fascinating how interesting men are nadja remembered the beautiful expression of gorney's face appealing guilty and tender when some one discussed music with him the efforts he made to prevent the passion from sounding in his voice passion must be concealed in a society where cold reserve and indifference are the signs of good breeding and he does try to conceal it but he does not succeed and everybody knows quite well that he has a passion for music never-ending discussions about music blundering pronouncements by men who do not understand keep him in incessant tension he is scared timid silent he plays superbly as an ardent pianist if he were not an officer he would be a famous musician the tears dried in her eyes nadja remembered how gorney told her of his love at a symphony concert and again downstairs by the cloakroom i am so glad you have at last made the acquaintance of the student grunsjeff she continued to write he is a very clever man and you are sure to love him yesterday he was sitting with us till two o'clock in the morning we were all so happy i was sorry that you hadn't come to us he said a lot of remarkable things nadja laid her hands on the table and lowered her head her hair covered the letter she remembered that gronsdiev also loved her and that he had the same right to her letter as gorny perhaps she had better write to gronsdiev for no cause a happiness began to quicken in her breast at first it was only a little one rolling about in her breast like a rubber ball then it grew broader and bigger and broke forth like a wave nadja had already forgotten about gorny and grunsjeff her thoughts became confused the happiness grew more and more from her breast it ran into her arms and legs and it seemed that a light fresh breeze blew over her head stirring her hair her shoulders trembled with quiet laughter the table and the lamp-glass trembled tears from her eyes splashed the letter 
she was powerless to stop her laughter and to convince herself that she had a reason for it she hastened to remember something funny what a funny poodle she cried feeling that she was choking with laughter what a funny poodle she remembered how gronstjeff was playing with maxime the poodle after tea yesterday how he told a story afterwards of a very clever poodle who was chasing a crow in the yard the crow gave him a look and said oh you swindler the poodle did not know he had to do with a learned crow he was terribly confused and ran away dumbfounded afterwards he began to bark no i'd better love gronstjeff nadya decided and tore up the letter she began to think of the student of his love of her own love with the result that the thoughts in her head swam apart and she thought about everything about her mother the street the pencil the piano she was happy thinking and found that everything was good magnificent her happiness told her that this was not all that a little later it would be still better soon it will be spring summer they will go with mother to gorbiki in the country gorney will come for his holidays he will walk in the orchard with her and make love to her gronstjeff will come too he will play croquet with her and bowls he will tell funny wonderful stories she passionately longed for the orchard the darkness the pure sky the stars again her shoulders trembled with laughter and she seemed to awake to a smell of wormwood in the room and a branch was tapping at the window she went to her bed and sat down she did not know what to do with her great happiness it overwhelmed her she stared at the crucifix which hung at the head of her bed and saying dear god dear god dear god end of story five